W A R D dollar sign. Dollar sign. N A Y I M E D A. Welcome to my channel. My name is Naim Elvis. I am your host. And today we got the literature on the table because there's a specific piece of Rick Ross's life story that I think runs parallel to damn near every single rapper we have in mainstream music today. So, today, let's just break this up into two parts. Why did Rick Ross become a correctional officer? And why did he quit his job as a correctional officer? Now, why did he get become a correctional officer? In Hurricanes, he details how he got into working as a CO. The simple answer without you having to go buy the book or read it is because opportunity presented itself for a job. He didn't try to sugarcoat it. He didn't try to glamorize it. He didn't try to, you know, in the beginning go into nothing that was like, oh, this amazing story is just like, I was young, I was broke. I had aspirations, I had dreams. I had a baby or whatever, and I needed a job. Point blank period. A nigga needed a job. This is every rapper's story. If they, if they're not, they might not have been a correctional officer, but these people was regular people before they was wished into stardom. Niggas, a lot of people didn't come through like, oh, I never had no job. That's very seldom. A lot of these people worked at the damn McDonald's, working at Kohl's, working at the gas station, and somehow, somewhere they decided to do something that thrust them into being able to get a roll on. And the perfect day to boss up, he said that people was clowning him because they didn't understand that where they was from, if you was capable of getting a job, you was going to get a job because money is money. And you could take your money and do whatever you want to, whether that would be to buy an eighth and try to break that down and flip it into something else. And that sounds really crazy, but, you know, taking your money and doing whatever you got to do, you do whatever you got to do to pay your bills and take care of your children. That's what he said in this book. Now, there's a lot of stuff that happened in between. We know the situation with 50 Cent and basically a blow to his career in a way because it really didn't really blow his career too heavy if we're talking about who had the longevity and who made other people into bigger stars and what they would have been if they went somewhere else or and who is still here, still maintaining and still able to live good not just from music, but from everything on the outside, being a correctional officer definitely took a hit at him. It took a hit at his career and people still bring it up. But realistically, he kept working and nobody cared about it, but it's still a scar on, you know, it's still a mark on your jacket. It's still something that is just like whatever, but you know, and I'm just going off of his account. I'm not going off of speculation. I'm going off of what I was reading. It still hurt him, but he kept working and he got over there. Now he goes into more details about, you know, he didn't really give too much information about the job per se. It's just, you know, he talked about how he tried to hide it. And he was trying to lie about it and he regretted lying about it. And he talked about that in the perfect day a boss up. He regret, he regretted lying about even, taking the job because it's nothing to be ashamed of the fact that he tried to do something and it just didn't work out. Now, why did he quit being a CEO? He quit being a CEO because he couldn't afford his music career. Rick Ross has, he was working for like 15 years before he even got a chance to see any type of success. Rick Ross was somebody and I remember um, the Carroll City, they was calling themselves Carroll City Cartel at one point, and I was young as fuck. I remember them because it was gunplay and it was somebody else. And they used to have like the it was like the the triple C logo, but they the C's was like all cut like it looked crazy, but it looked like actually the barrel of the inside of a revolver, now that I'm thinking about it. But I remember I personally remember that as a kid because I thought it was just like, man, this is so cool. And my grandma is from South Florida. My, actually, my grandma is from the same area as Kodak Black. That's just extra information you probably will never have to use unless we go on a game show or some shit. But he 
What was I saying? Shit. Oh yeah, he quit. He was he's been working. He's been working and working and working. He was training Ghost Rider. He was Ghost Rider for other people in Florida. He was working with Kanye West. He's been working. He was working with Cali for a very long time. That's how he established these relationships because he was. This was back in those times where you had to actually put your shoes on and go outside and meet with the people. He was going to the clubs. He was spending money on recording. He was trying to do all of this. His CO job wasn't paying for the shit that he needed. We got to be for real. His CO job wasn't allowing him to get into his music career, how he could have been in his music career if he didn't have this correctional officer job in his way. This is a lot of rappers dilemma today as to why it's either not happening as fast as it could be, or it's not happening at all because they have their regular lives in the way. How he got into the drug game, he already had friends, bro. I mean, it was South Florida. All those people knew each other anyway. But he already had had friends. He already had connections. He already had people that he already met. I'm sure the CO situation just made it even better as to being able to get in contact with people. And you know how all of that stuff go. Networking and all the logistics. I'm not getting into that on this channel. But he had to quit that job or else it wouldn't be no Rick Ross. That's why he quit. They're like, you could put two and two together. He never really goes into details about why quitting like this. But if you use your context clues, he's telling you, like, I had to do something else. I got into selling dope because I need to afford this music career. And that led me to when I was listening to Richer Than I Ever Been the other day, the album. He has a line up there that says he's, he started selling dope. He just wanted a, real, a way around it. That's why a lot of people get into, and we talk about musicians, and regular people too, but I'm strictly talking music. This is how a lot of them get into the drug game, no matter what level. Or, you know, music is an exaggeration of whatever's happening. But a lot of people get into trapping because they need an easier way to get that fast money. There's a lot of profession out, professions out here that you can just make rapid, 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 fast money. That's good if you are not trying to be a rapper because the ROI, the return on investment for being a rapper is, or a musician or songwriter or anything is not as fast as it would be you out here doing whatever any of those other professions. And a lot of people are going to find themselves in this predicament going forward. You know, most of the time you don't realize it, but you're going to spend most of your life working. Why are you working somewhere where you're not going to be happy? Why are you taking a profession up where you're not going to be happy, where you're not want, you're not going to feel fulfilled? And sometimes you have to take chances on yourself. Now, I'm not going to tell you what type of chances to take on yourself. I personally don't suggest this because you might not get lucky. This could all be a lie. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about his books. But it's just a very interesting takeaway from the fact that this is more people's story then, and even if, because you know how people like to jumble up words and stuff, even if they didn't go to the extreme as to doing that, they just maybe have quit their regular job and decided to get into music or they quit their job and decided to just go full-fledged into this. A lot of rappers lie about their come-up stories. A lot of rappers lie about how they got to where they was at. And it shows and it proves when they lie because they come in and they Leave just that quick. So how did he become a CEO? He just did it because he needed a job. Why did he quit? Because he won't make enough money to fund his rap career. And that's how he got into the drug game. So he could pay to fund his career. Because this is a very expensive profession. So thank y'all for tuning in. My name is Nye Mellis. I will N-A-Y-I-M-E-D-W-A-R-D dollar sign. Dollar sign. N-A-Y-I-M-E-D-A-A.